All right, guys, so we didn't get to have lab. Um, and I like to just have a discussion on some pediatric imaging tips for um, one of my labs here. And so I'm gonna start with pediatric chest X-ray. And depending on the age of your child um, and their willingness to cooperate is really key um, in deciding how you will approach your imaging with kids. Um, so some tips that I would really like you to take from this is always prepare your room ahead of time. Try and keep the lights on if you can. Um, and bribery goes a long way. So stickers or something at the end goes a long way with kids, not, not the infants, but you know, older kids. So for chest x-ray, you have kind of three options. The infants, I do supine um, up to probably at least three months. So if they can't hold their head up, they can't go in an upright position. So we do an AP supine on the table and a left lateral on the table. It can be done tabletop um table bucky with or without a grid personally i remove the grid uh, it reduces my patient dose i also set my own techniques um i find that to be more accurate with kids especially moving targets than using my photo cells but your technologist they will show you both ways um so you would want to, we don't have this mechanism <laughs> as this picture does here, but it was just an example of how to hold the arms up out of the way. Your infants will be directly on the table. You can utilize sandbags on lead shields, parents with lead on to hold. You would want to hold kind of legs down still and arms up and out of the way. Pediatrics tend to have um, outfits on with snaps and zippers. So they also might have writing on them. So make sure and taking off um, their onesies and all that kind of stuff. I hate to repeat for something simple as clothing that I could have taken off. So I always err on the side of caution and just take it off. And I explained that to my parents. I said, I'd, I'd rather you just take off the clothing and not risk having to repeat because there's an artifact on there and I don't want to radiate your child unnecessarily. So that's the way I approach it. Uh, supine AP, you want the arms up and out of the way. I don't love what this marker is. It's really close to the anatomy rib, rib cage. Um, so maybe up and out of the way would be better. But as flat as possible, trying to get it on an inspiration is tough. If they're screaming, actually at the end of the scream is usually when they take a deep breath in. Um, lateral positioning for infants. So what I want you to make sure we're doing is a true left lateral. The arms need to be up and out of the way. So have the parent in the front of the child so they can see them and they'll look straighter on if they're looking at their parent. Holding those arms up, have them hold both arms in the front. And then I use the lead shield underneath my hand and I hold the hips at the same time. So you're gonna have them controlling arms and hips. This little guy seems to be quite content and no one's having to hold his hips, but I would say that's rare in this situation. Um, you're going to do a left lateral. You're going to be centered and collimated more than this picture, pretty please. Um, but just trying to get that lateral image there. Um, if they're a little bit bigger, if you bring the patient in and you ask the parent if they're holding their head up on their own and they say yes, then you can use uh, our equipment. It's called a Pigastat. The Pigastat is a great immobilization device that allows us to do upright chest x-rays. And remember with chest x-rays, upright is preferred than supine because supine makes um, the heart look enlarged and we don't want that. So as soon as they can go upright, we use this piece of equipment. And I explain the piece of equipment to my the parents. I tell them this is ideal because it holds the child still and it reduces my need for repeats. And anytime you tell them it's gonna save their child radiation dose, it usually calms the parent. The child is gonna put their feet down through the sides of this. It looks like a little bicycle seat, and that's basically what it is. They're gonna sit on that. You need to have the parents holding their arms up over their head. And then you're gonna close these plastic um, shields on either side. 
So these little plastic pieces are rounded. It goes around the child and you need to make sure you're using the appropriate size for the child you have. So we have a small and large set. And so for infants, you wanna make sure you have the small ones. If it's a larger child, maybe a year or older, you might wanna use the bigger ones. You don't wanna be pinching the child's skin, watch their face. The, obviously this is a tiny little baby doll, but um, their faces usually will be higher up here. Once you close these around the child, these small red locks, they will lock them in place. And then the headlock is this little leather strap. It usually goes right on this screw right here to keep them in tight and not moving. Don't let those elbows drop in because then when you go to do lateral, you'll have elbows in the way, all right? Um, always have the parent with them. I don't love these two pictures because it doesn't have the parent with them, but you are gonna do the same thing. You're gonna slide that pigastat straight up against the wall bucky. These little pieces here are lead shields and you can raise that up right behind them or you can use those um, small square ones that we have on the counters, usually in all the rooms. You can put that right up against them. So this will be your PA. The circle on top, you just slide the child around into a lateral position without taking them out, okay? You can do it that way. If they're too big for the pigastat, but you don't think they're gonna stand and stay put for you, you can use what we call kind of the sitting method. They'll sit on the end of the table. Um, we don't have this fancy dancy holder here at our clinical site, um, but we do have a cassette holder. So instead of having the girl PA, I do mine AP. You have to build them up on a little block though, because the tube can't come all the way down to the table. It's gonna hit the table. So prop them up on a square block. The sponge, the chest sponge tends to work great. Um, and have the parent with them to kind of hold them in place. And I usually do it AP and put the cassette right behind them in that cassette holder that we had, that portable one. It's a white one, it kind of goes up and down. Um, and then you just have them sit lateral. I always have the parent in front so they can see their parent. And then the cassette you can see is right next to them and you'll get your left lateral chest. This is just one where the parent behind is a little bit of an older child, okay. And then if they can stand, you can do it up against the wall stand. So you can either do it AP or PA. I tend to do it AP if they're a little bit wiggly, if I don't think they're gonna hold still, um, I put them AP because I can see them and they can see their parent through the window of the control panel or their parent will be standing in the room with them. Um, just make sure you mark the correct side. So normally you do chest x-ray PA. If you're gonna do it AP, make sure you have your left or right on the correct side of the child. Um, kids, I tend to have my light a little higher. I feel like their APCs are always high. So watch your light fields they can be a little wiggly side to side too so keep an eye on that if they're moving around but ap or pa same 72 inch distance detented right to your wall bucky photo timing and this is key when you are photo timing pediatric chest you are going to choose center cell only for both the ap and the lateral why the kids are too small to reach those two outer cells so the using the center cell is more accurate okay and the lateral, we don't, this little girl has something she's holding over her head. We don't have that at the clinical site. So I do similar to what this tech is doing. He's demonstrating to the child how to stand um, with his left lateral side against here and his elbows in front. Or I have the parent stand where he is, shield the parent and have them hold their kids' arms up over their head. One trick I found is having the parent hold at the elbows. They have more control of the child at their elbows than they do at their wrists. They can still kind of wiggle around if they just hold their wrists. And you'll shield them as well on the side here, right? So if you went from a PA position to a lateral, you gotta make sure and sh slide that shield around to the side, okay? And then abdomens. So you may have to do an abdomen complete on a child and it's really the same positioning as um, an adult. So supine, KUB, if it's a little infant like this guy here, I still use a grid, okay, on my abdomens. Unless it's a NICU baby, then you can get away with it. But infants, I still use a grid for my abdomens. One thing you wanna watch out for for pediatric abdomen is the diaper. If the diaper is wet at all, it's gonna show up as an artifact. 
watch the clothing. The onesies tend to have snaps down the bottom. If they're far enough down, that's fine. If they have these zipper outfits on, that has to come off. So they're utilizing a sandbag to keep his legs in place and a shield. Obviously the females, right, we can't shield on a KUB, but the males we can. And then left lateral, this little guy is really impressive. He's laying on his left side, decubitus abdomen, central ray. You're still going to want to go a little bit above crest. I think they're a little low here, getting way down on his femurs, but you get the idea. Um, older kids, for an upright, they may be able to stand for you. They may stand right up against the wall stand. If they're a little wiggly, I have the parent kind of hold um, the shield on their pelvis, kind of keeping them right up against that wall stand, okay? So they might be able to stand right there for you. Pediatric extremities. So to comp on a PD extremity, they have to be six years old and under. And same with chest x-ray. It has to be six or under, right? Um, just some tips. So keeping them still, you can use sandbags. But there's some paper tape that you can use that won't hurt their skin, all right? But it just is a little reminder to help them stay in place. And um, you can have the parent hold. They can wear lead gloves if they're concerned about their hands in the area. Holding them still, always with their shield on. I do this method a lot with these two patients right here. Um, I have the child sit in the parent's lap and I just shield both of them. The mom can easily reach around and hold this little guy's hand, keeping it straight for a forearm or AP elbow, whatever they're about to do here bringing the cassette close to them and the table up to a height that's comfortable. Um, they're utilizing some tape here on this little PD foot. Um, and obviously you can see the shield sitting here. The one other thing that we have at the clinical site is a clear plastic piece that can be used to kind of compress because babies love to curl their toes. So you might see that as well. It does show up on your image, um, but you know, sometimes that's what we have to do. Okay, I hope that was helpful for some pediatric imaging tips and we'll go through more detail with our pediatric imaging lecture.